Alrighty, can you guys hear me again? Yes. Are there any any questions or comments about the first part of the lecture? So this is a tricky part. I I am I, I know that. Um, so it's going to take a little bit of time to get to get used to these conditional expectations, the random variables, and um, how do you calculate them and how do you work with them? Uh, this is what this is what we are we're going to be doing. Um, now it's set up, and so next time we can start applying it to um, uh, to the multi-period uh, binomial model. Okay, so <clears throat> instead of just overloading you guys with theory, uh, the idea is to uh, do something in the second half that's uh, less heavy on uh, abstraction and, and more specific. And so what I want to do here is I want to continue with... Um, I want to continue uh, with Hull. Last time we talked uh, in the second half of the lecture, we talked about uh, we talked about swaps. We were we worked quite hard down here in section uh, seven point five, and so what I'm going to do now is we're going to jump ahead. We're going to go down here in section seven eleven, and we're going to talk about. Uh, his chapter here is very short. It's just a few pages. Um, we're going to talk about credit default swaps. As so a credit default swaps uh, in 08 and 09, uh, they played a, a huge role in the um, in the crisis. And um, I want to talk about what these uh, these contracts are about. Uh, how how do they work? And and um, they, are, they are still out there in one form, shape, or another. So, so we're going to be talking about uh, credit uh, default uh, swaps. Right, so what this here is, this is a bet. A bet on a uh, what's called a credit event. And so, so let's just say that this one here is default. Right, default bankruptcy bankrupt bankruptcy right so so one part so one party one party uh, places a bet places a bet on uh, some company on company, it could be a company, it could be a country, uh, it could be in the US, it could be a state. Um, fill in here on a, so you pick out your company that you like, Facebook, Google, uh, a country, this was Greece in particular, states, there are lots of states in the US that have issue uh, that you can place uh, these um, these bets on. And place on a bet on a company uh, going broke. So one party places a bet and another party, uh, another party, so that's the counterparty, another party uh, uh, enters the opposite. Right, so one party says, I want money if uh, Pennsylvania, uh, the state Pennsylvania, PA, if that state uh, defaults. And um, the other party says, well, okay, I'll give you money if PA defaults. And then of course, in return, there's gonna be a fee. That's the mechanism of credit default swaps. They are, back then, they were, uh, they were dealt with more like insurance contracts. They were, I'm not sure what the current state is, but you were, you were, uh, you were treated uh, like insurance contracts. <clears throat> so you were not considered a financial security. Um, 
So on one hand, you'll have, uh, so when you talk about insurance, then the language is different. You'll say protection. So you have a protection buyer. So you'll have a protection buyer. So that's one entity, right? He gets paid. He gets paid if this company, let's call it for A, if A uh, defaults. And then you have a protection seller. So he's sitting over here. All right, so he pays. Um, right, so he gets paid if A defaults. And the protection seller, he pays. Uh, and he pays, he pays out if uh, A defaults. All right, so what is happening here is, what is happening here is that in this direction, there'll be a payment and the payment is gonna be one minus pi. Okay, so this pi is a bit tricky. Those are, this is what the protection buyer he gets, right? So more specifically, what happens is that this is kind of the, the net effect. What, what one could think is you could have that this is a one that goes in this direction. And then what goes in the other direction here will be a pi. And this pi there, what that is, is the, um, it's called recovery. And what that is, is basically defaulted bonds. Defaulted bonds uh, from A. Right, so the net effect, these two things combined, this is gonna give you net uh, one minus pi in, in this direction. All right, so if there's a default, the protection seller, he pays notional, that's this one here, this is the notional. And in return, he's gonna get, um, in return, he will get the defaulted bonds. So that pi could be zero. It is pi is typically taken to be uh, 0.4. In most of the models that were around at the time, this was always like a standard that people put in 40% on a dollar. So <clears throat> the protection seller, he gives out one, in return, he gets these defaulted uh, bonds. If there's a default, and otherwise what happens is that the protection buyer to enter this uh, bet, the protection buyer, he pays, uh, he pays fees. He pays fees. Uh, right, he pays fees, so this can be like an insurance contract, you can pay your fee up front, it can either be up front, it can be running, or some combination. And these fees you pay till, uh, till default uh, or expiry. Right, so you enter a deal that runs over, I don't know, five years, say over five years. And so what you'll be doing is you'll either pay all the fees up front or you'll be paying like an annual fee or uh, you'll be paying every quarter. And so you'll pay this fee to the protection seller. And then in return, the protection seller, he says, that, well, if there is a default, I'm gonna give you uh, $1, I'll give you the notional. And then in return, you will give me these um, defaulted bonds. So there are lots of problems with this. Uh, there were lots of problems with this structure. Uh, lots of problems um, with this structure. Uh, so one problem is uh, if default happens, Uh, you need to get your hands the protection buyer the protection buyer the protection buyer
uh, needs uh, he needs the bonds, the defaulted bonds, to get notional. Right, so you bought this, uh, you placed this bet, but if you want to be paid, uh, you're going to go out and get your hands on these defaulted bonds. And this this can be hard, right? So if it's Greece, relatively small country, there might not be that many bonds out there. And um, if you want to get the $1, you have to return these defaulted bonds to the protection seller. So if you can't get your hands on them, you're not going to get the notional. And this problem here, this was compounded. It was made much worse. This was made much worse by the, um, the unwinding procedure. So there, there's a lots of counterparty risk here. Um, so say, so say at time time zero, say that <clears throat> that Y company Y sold uh, X uh, protection. Say at time one, uh, Y wishes uh, Y wishes to get out. And the way that he wishes, the way that he gets out is um, why wishes to get out of the position, and um, he buys, he buys protection uh, from say Z. Right, so you have a company that has sole protection, and then at some point later he wants to get out. And the way that he does it is he enters a similar contract, but with company C. And this is a problem. This is problematic if, um, if C also defaults. Because if C defaults, then Y will not get the protection from Z. But he still has to get protection. He still has to provide protection to X in case of default. So this way of unwinding it, and you don't cancel out. Like, why does not cancel out with X? Why doesn't just he sold protection from X and he doesn't just cancel out with X? No, instead he goes to a third company and asks this third company to uh, sell him protection, and then he can then pass on that protection to X in case need be. Like, and every time this happens, you have to get your hands on these bonds. So there's this way of settling. This is problematic because if one of the, and this could happen many, many times, right? So it was not just company Z that would be involved. There'll also be other companies and uh, maybe later on Y wishes to re-enter. Uh, and then maybe he, he makes a contract with the company uh, A uh, or B and so on. And, and it, this can keep circling around. And every time you want to unwind your position, the way that you do it is you enter a contract of the opposite sign with another company, right? And so you're, in theory, you should be all good if everybody pays up in case need be. But the problem is if one of the one of the companies doesn't pay up because you have defaulted, well then you're on the hook yourself. And every time a default happens in, on the underlying, uh, in this case the underlying was say Greece or Pennsylvania or Company A. Every time there is one of these um, defaults in the underlying, all this stuff he has to clear, right? And for it to clear, you have to go out and get your hands on these bonds. So this structure here, this is this was not a good structure, um, but this was how it was, and I bet it was still like this uh, in some parts. What I had in mind for how to get a feeling of what uh, uh, what a CS structure is, I want to play with an with an old uh, an old exam problem that was given out. I put some of these problems out on um, on canvas. There are some old exam problems. I also put one on the homework. There's one on the homework. As well. So let me try to work it through. <clears throat> let me try to work it through an example where you get a feel for what a CDS contract is. 
Um, so the example is So you want to have, um, there are two, there's two CS uh, contracts trading. So the first one, this is, um, this is a five year, uh, 200 basis point, which is 2% uh, all running. So the fee is being paid. Um, it's all running, all running, so there's no upfront. And um, so the contract, the contract is going to do, you'll have 2% payment. This is year one, 2%. If there's no default, then there is a 2% payment on the notional. So if you put one dollar, if you put a hundred dollars at uh, in as notional, it will be two dollars. So it's just a two bucks here on a hundred notional. Two bucks, two bucks on a hundred notional. So on a hundred notional, two percent on hundred notional is two bucks. So two bucks, two bucks. And this is the second year. This is the third year. And so maybe there's a default here. In that case you don't pay anymore. There's a default right here. You don't pay anymore. And uh, so these are your payments and then you receive one minus pi. All right, so let's just say that this is uh, 0.6. You of course don't know what the value of these uh, defaulted bonds will be. So, but think about 0.6. This was what one of many of the models used back then. So this is payment down here, right? So this is, if you are buying, protection this is these are the fees to a protection buyer these are the fees and then what you're getting down here this is the protection in case of a default right we don't know if there's a default but if there is one then you are getting one minus pi so that's one cds contract uh, that is trading there's another cds contract that's trading on the same on the same company so this is trading uh, on say company a so this year could be uh, this could be a, a company could be a country it could be a state etc and the same <coughs> the same underlying is also traded on a, um, a five-year basis but um, instead of 200 running is 150 basis points. So this is 1.5% running plus there's a 2% up front. So if we again are running, if we are pretending that the notional is 100, then there would be a payment up front, right? There'll be a payment up front, which will be two. And then there'll be smaller payments at the later time. So this year was at time zero. And then this is one year, say, there'll be $1.5 coming up this time. One, five, this was one, two, three, two, three, 1.5, right? And so if there's a default, then you're gonna get this 60. Times a hundred, right? <clears throat> so here, these are the fees, and this here is the uh, protection payment. So you have these two contracts. You're trading. One has. Uh, uh, running payments of two dollars, zero upfront. The other one has a two dollar upfront, and then smaller uh, subsequent payments. And this runs all the way out to the end. The end here is at five. You stop paying the fees as soon as you see a default, right? So if there is a default here, then you will be paying the fees up to the last point before, 
if there are no defaults, you'll be paying all the way up to and including the end of the file. Setup of the uh, of the two CDS contracts. Any questions on the setup? So now there are a number of questions that we can try to address within the setting of being able to trade uh, these two CS contracts. First question. The first question. So say question one. Uh, construct. Construct and all up front as CDS contract, right? So there's, there's zero running. You pay all the money up front. Right, so what we're looking for here is a huge payment here in the beginning, and then there'll be zero payments. So zero, 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 right? And then here they'll get this one minus pi. Uh, if you're on a hundred, right? So how much, how many dollars are we willing to put here? And what is the amount of dollars to put here? This is all up front. Okay, so there's zero dollars here, zero dollars here, zero dollars here, and so on. And it runs out to five years as before. How much are we willing to put there? We can trade these two contracts. Any guesses? What will be the all of front payment if I can trade these two guys? Discount all cash flows to time zero. Yeah, so so we don't have there's no at this point, the only two things that we can trade, the only two things that we can trade are the first one and the second one. These are the two things I can trade. At this point, we don't have a stock, we don't have a bank account, we don't have any of these things. We can just trade these two. And I wanna create, I wanna create a contract it has zero fees after the initial point. It has all the fees up front. So I need to buy, sell a number of this one. I need to buy, sell a number of this one, such that when I combine the two diagrams, I'm gonna get the diagram that I have down here. I'll get it. So would you buy, sell the first one? You're probably gonna, you're gonna be buying one, selling the other one. So if you wanna buy this one, you're selling that one. If you're buying this one, you're gonna sell that one. How, how, how many and how few should I do? Well, to get started, you can see, I need to create something that looks like this. Right, I have this picture and I have this picture. Right? So if you wanna start here with the, this leg here, you see you have a two here. So maybe I could buy one, Maybe if I buy one, maybe if I buy one, um, buy one of number two of type two. Okay, so what is that going to give me? So now buying this one. Okay, so then there are all these payments coming in at later times. This won't work, right? Because I want zeros there. So buy one of these, and then how many should I sell? Sell of type type one. Well, I have these 1.5 here. I need to do something with this 1.5 that's coming in. 
And what I could do is I could swap it over and match them up with a two. Right, so what is the ratio between two and 1.5? Well, it's probably something like three over four. So then uh, if I look at the fees, what will the fees be? Well, up front, the upfront payment would be um, would be two dollars. There's no upfront payment component to this one, so it's just going to be two bucks up front. And now, what about running? Um, well, I'll have to pay. I have to pay one point five. So this is so I pay here. So I pay. Um, I pay in half, one and a half, and I get uh, three over four times times what times two, and um, this is one and a half. All right. So the net, the net at a running time. So so zero net. At, uh, at one, two, and so on. And what about the, so these, these were the fee legs. Those were the, the stuff that's on top. I mean, what about the bottom part? So, so the protection, the protection, well, if there's no default, then nothing happens. So if there's a default, if a default, if, uh, if no default, then there's no nothing happens. Yeah, so if default, well, if default about protection, right, so I'm gonna get, um, I'm gonna get protection from this one. Right, so I'm gonna get one minus pi times 600 times 700. I'm going to get uh, one minus pi times a hundred. That's because I bought protection, and now also sold protection. So also I have to pay. I have to pay. How much do I have to pay? Well, I bought. I, I sold three quarters. So this is going to be three quarters times one minus pi times a hundred. Right. So the net. The net here is going to be. Uh, I'm going to get one, I'm going to pay three quarters. So the net is going to be one over four times one minus pi times a hundred. <clears throat> okay, I'll be any closer to figuring out what this all up front should be. Well, if I put $2 up front, I'm going to get the zeros here, but then what I'm going to get over here is not one minus pi. What I'm going to get over here is one over four times one minus pi. So two is not the correct value. What is the correct value here? It shouldn't be one over four, it should be one. I need to multiply everything by, how do I get this thing here to become one? You multiply everything by four. So what should the all upfront payment be? Eight dollars. It should be eight bucks, right? Very good. So all up front, eight bucks. <clears throat> so that was the first one. This was how we could combine such two contracts to create one that has an all up front payment. Now we can go to the other extreme and um, we can create, this is question two. We can construct uh, this annuity that we talked about. So construct risky annuity. So the word risky is in here. Construct risky annuity. So what is a risky annuity? This is something that pays 
one dollar like an annuity is something that pays a constant quantity but now it's not risk free it's risky so it pays one dollar until default so we're sitting here time one it pays out four bucks no it pays out one box one buck pays out one dollar Pays out one dollar, and then here, if there's default, then it doesn't pay out anything. How much are you willing to pay for such a deal until default? After default, zero. So if there's default here, then the subsequent payments would be zero. If this is this, if there's default, how much would we pay for such a deal? What is the upfront payment here? <clears throat> Again, we can trade in. Now we have three things we can trade. In. We can trade in the we can trade in the uh, all running, some upfront and running and then all up front so i want to get <clears throat> i want to get um i want to get this leg here see if i can get that leg to fit up here so if i do um what happens if i buy uh, i buy the all up front uh, cds and this is going to cost me eight bucks And now <clears throat> what, I, what I'm facing is that if there's a default, uh, I'm gonna get this one minus pi payment. So to get rid of that, because there's no one minus pi payment in a risky annuity. So to get rid of, rid of that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sell, I'm gonna sell uh, all running. I'm gonna buy one, I'm gonna sell one all running CDNs. Up front, that costs me nothing. And this is at time zero. But now, if I sold this, uh, right, so if there's a default, I have protection coming in from the first one. So I just turn around and give it out. But here I'll get payments. This one here will have payments. It'll have payments of $2 until default. And if I want to get the correct payment, if you want to get the correct payment, then I should only have one. I should only have one here instead of the two. So how do I correct it? What do I put up here in the first leg? Eight dollars will create a string of twos. I just want a string of ones. So what should the upfront payment be? Four dollar. Four dollars. And you can see here, this is going to give you an idea, right? The horizon is five years. What are you willing to pay? What are you willing to pay to get $1 at the end of the first five years if there's no default? And otherwise, you'll just get a dollar up until uh, default happens. Well, in this model, you'll be willing to pay four bucks for that. So here it's risky, right? Because this is not the interest rate alone that's playing in, right? There's also the chance of you not getting payments after the default time, right? It drops from one to zero after default. And then the last question. Uh, so now we're gonna put, <clears throat> we're gonna say that there are zero coupon bonds traded. Uh, so say that, um, say that, a risk-free uh, zero coupon bond uh, is trading uh, 
And so now they have the ability to also trade risk-free. So in addition to all these CDS contracts that we have and this risky annuity, we can also trade in a risk-free zero coupon bond. Okay, so what we want to create here is what's called a PPN. This is a principal, principal protected note. These are called PPNs. And I think Hall, Hall has this in here somewhere. I forget where he has it. The principal, we look over here. The principal protected note. So this is 831. This is in his, uh, uh, just these uh, buzzwords that he has over here at the end. So let me see what, what he says about a principal protected note. Principal protected note. This is a product where the return earned depends on the performance of a risky asset, but it's guaranteed to be non negative so that the investor's principal is preserved. Right, so the principal you're guaranteed to get back. Okay, so we need to create a note, a financial instrument such that you get your principal back for sure. Okay, so what happens here is, what happens here is to say you have a hundred bucks initial and say that the zero coupon bond that is traded, say that the zero coupon bond is traded, <coughs> the, uh, the five year zero coupon bond is uh, traded uh, at uh, say 80 cents on a dollar, five year zero coupon bond, right? So out here at out here at the end of the period, you're gonna get your one dollar. This is the five year horizon, and here at time zero, this is worth uh, 80 cents. Right, so that's the risk free zero coupon bond. So we're gonna protect the notional, we're gonna protect the principal, and it's a hundred bucks. So you want to be sure to get a hundred bucks back at the end, right? So you're going to buy. Um, you want to buy uh, 100 zero coupon bonds, right? You're going to cost you 80 bucks. Then these risk-free zero coupon bonds, they're going to give you uh, one dollar at the end. It's going to protect your initial principal. When you had 100 bucks, so what's left is 20. So you buy, uh, you buy, you have these risky annuities up here. So you buy, uh, you buy, how many do you buy? You buy $20 worth of uh, these uh, risky annuities. And so this will add up to 100. How many can you get? Well, each one was four bucks. You have 20, so you get five, five risky annuities. Right? And each one of them comes with a dollar one. So the, uh, so the rate here is uh, five, uh, 5%. So in such a world, you get a hundred bucks you want to protect the hundred bucks, so you get the hundred bucks back at the end. Okay, you do that simply by investing in risk-free zero coupon bonds, so U.S. Treasuries, <clears throat> and uh, that leaves you with twenty bucks. You can put at risk, and you just buy risky annuity. If you put twenty bucks into this structure here, then we have a twenty here. Then you have five, 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 five. So it'll pay a rate of five percent on the hundred, up until default, and then of course you have to wait until the end, and you get your principal. Uh, fully back. So that's a principal protected note. And you can create such principal protected notes by trading in uh, CDS contracts. As well as the risk free zero coupon. Does this make sense to you guys?
So this was a little bit about CDS contracts. Let me spend the last few minutes just talking about uh, generalizations of, of what, what kind of products um, that one would do after looking at CDS contracts. Um, so we can see here, <clears throat> there is one party, there's just one underlying name. And the, um, the immediate uh, generalization that, that one would look for is to move into baskets. So baskets, um, this would be where there would be a, um, there'll be many uh, underlying uh, names many underlying names uh, that could default. That's the word baskets. Um, one example here is um, the nth uh, to default contract. <clears throat> the nth to default contract most prominently uh, the first to default, the uh, second to default, and so on. Right, so again, you'll have you'll have the protection buyer, and over here you'll have the protection seller. You'll have the two legs here. There will be a uh, fee payments uh, till uh, the first default. But now there are many names in here. And in return, in return, you'll shoot back notional and you would have to shoot back uh, defaulted bonds. So this is in case of default. Just as before. <clears throat> as before. Right. These two here, the net to one minus pi in case of first default. And what becomes really interesting now is um, the the new the new feature and new feature. Uh, compared to uh, uh, these uh, single name uh, CDS contracts. Contracts. The new feature is the dependence. <clears throat> it's the dependence uh, between uh, defaults uh, in the basket. And we're almost out of time. So let me just maybe look at a very simple, uh, very simple example. So if, if I just had two names, so say that I had, um, say I had two, I had a basket with two names. Basket with two names. So if I'm looking at, if I'm looking at CDS contracts, on each name. What, what I'm interested in there is the probability, the probability that, um, probability that uh, uh, name one uh, defaults. Uh, so that's, and probability that name two defaults. These are the two things that I'm interested in. But if I'm starting to look at uh, first to default, so for the first to default, I'm looking at the first to default. Well, then, then what I'm looking at is the probability that uh, at least one name uh, defaults. Right. So I'll be interested in 
and I should probably do this under the risk implementation to be specific. We talked about the speed limit. I'll be interested in the probabilities that if I'm looking at a CDS, I'm just interested in the probability that the, one of the names default. But if I'm looking at the first default, well, I'm not interested in the specific uh, name that defaults. I just need one of them to do it. And so you can consider cases like, so you can consider cases like, um, like this, if this is my omega, right? There could be cases like it could be disjoint, right? This could be name one defaults. And it could be this one is name two defaults. That could be one case. <clears throat> and you could have like, if I'm just interested in a two up here, if I have, these could have exactly the same size, right? So it could be the same probability. But then when I look at the, at least one name defaults, well, then I should add up these two, right? So then this is gonna become the sum of the previous two, or it could be this, this is, this is one example. This is one scenario. Then this probability here is equal to the sum. And we could have another scenario, if this is my omega, we could have another scenario where, uh, where the two events, they could be somehow staggered. I could have that the inner one is name one, defaults. And then I could have the outer ring, this could be name two defaults. So then what is the probability that at least one name defaults? Well, that's going to be the biggest one. So in that case, in that case, it won't be the sum of the two. It will just be one of them, and it'll be the biggest one. So you can see this probability here. It tends to be related to these two, but it can be it can be like either the sum of them, or it can be just the maximum of them. And so this probability here depends highly upon how the defaults of name one and two correlate. So then you need to build you need to build models that have a correlation structure, and then you uh, then you can try to get at uh, try to get at these baskets like first, second, and third, and fourth default. You can also see here you could you could enter take uh, to create problems. So you you could enter you could enter two CDS contracts, two CDSs, or you could enter like a first to default and a second to default. But you provide the same protection. And if you looked at a picture on how the payments would be over time, the two CDS contracts, if you have something of the same size, uh, this if the individual spreads, if the individual fees on these two probabilities here are the same, but typically you will have you will have the here would be your uh, your two CDS fees. But if you looked at the first default contract, that's gonna be a lot pricier, right? It could even, that alone could be the sum of these two, but then you also have to add something over here. So typically over here, you'll have the uh, first two default plus second two default uh, fee. And then it would run for a while. And this is the fee that you will be paying. And then there's a default. So the first default happened. And then what happens is that just one of the two fees in the CDS portfolio just drops out. And if you have the same size, it would just continue with the half. But the top part here, if we make that in blue, the top part here, now we're we done with the very expensive uh, first to default uh, fee. And this thing here is, this one here is occupying a lot more than the first one. So this could actually drop down to here and then it could stay on there. And so we're continuing on what you're seeing here this is the second to default fee. And the second to default fee could be a much smaller than each of the individual CDS fees, even though the two CDS fees would be of comparable sizes. So in a class, uh, if you were to look at, uh, if you were to look at building uh, prices for CDS contracts and subsequently for basket contracts, 
Uh, these are issues that will come up, like how would I create a pricer? Well, if I wanted to do baskets, I need to be careful about this correlation because this is what is going to drive everything. In this one in particular, right? if one name defaults, then the other one, if name number two defaults, then the other one defaults as well. Um, right? so, so these will be considerations that one would have to take into account if you were to build uh, one of these um, the first to default, second to default prices. Okay, I think this is this is all I, I wanted to say for now. The, the important part here, I, I wanted to give you an idea about these credit default swaps, and, and we did that, but there's more to the story. Uh, it's a natural thing to move into baskets after having studied the single name. Um, are there questions or comments here before we, we call it quits? Alrighty, if that's if that's not the case, then um, uh, there are office hours this week, uh, as uh, Sherry, your TA, said. Uh, there are going to be some changes on her end, but on my end, uh, there are going to be no changes. We will have uh, we'll have office hours on Friday morning from nine to ten. Alrighty, I will see you guys. Uh, I'll see you guys next week. Thank you, Professor. You're welcome. <clears throat> Thank you. You're welcome.